Hello, my name is David Rubenstein. I'd like to say a couple of words about the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, the first movement. I recently came across a controversy regarding the tempo, and there are some other controversies about this first movement, which I hope to talk about in a later video, but for today, I'm just going to talk about the tempo of the first movement. Before I get to that, a short uh, digression, and that's about Beethoven's recipe for coffee. The story goes that Beethoven measured 60 coffee beans per cup. I have a much simpler recipe. Okay, so here's how I measure coffee. I have measured five cups using my palm. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Okay, and I'll also point out something very interesting on this container. It says here, do not hold over people. That's a very interesting suggestion. So, how should we figure out the tempo of the first movement of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata? And secondly, why is tempo important? If we put ourselves in the shoes of the composer, we begin to understand why. If the tempo is too slow, the mood changes completely. For example, a pleasant melody can become somber. The rhythm can be obscured. Now, for example, looking at the dotted rhythm here. This is what happens if I play it too slowly. I just played is not the dotted eighth followed by a sixteenth that Beethoven wrote. It is a double dotted eighth followed by a thirty-second note. By the same token, if the tempo is too fast, uh, it becomes agitated and details are obscured. When someone would tell him that he heard a performance somewhere of one of his symphonies, Beethoven's first question was, how was the tempo? He was so concerned about inaccurate tempos that he wrote a letter in 1817 in which he states that the terms allegro, adagio, andante, and so on were nonsense, and that the metronome gives us an opportunity to abandon those terms. As a result, he put metronome markings on all of his symphonies. Beethoven uh, did not have a metronome until about 13 years after he wrote this piece. Now, I randomly listened to about 10 famous pianists playing this piece, averaged about 50 beats per minute, um, Serkin measured about 40, Glenn Gould about 70, with Gilles and Horowitz at an average uh, tempo of about 50. The metronome markings and the descriptive words which I mentioned before might be considered uh, something like primary sources. If we assume that the first editions were correct, we see that the time signature is a la breve, or cut time. That means twice as fast as 4-4, four, four, or common time, right? Well, not so fast. Cut time also is interpreted to mean not twice as fast, but slightly faster than common time. Either way, we don't know how fast common time is in this particular case. The time signature only tells us how the counting is divided. It's sort of like you're carrying a box containing four small apples, but now they become two large apples. Regardless, of how fast you're walking. 
Which brings us to the secondary sources. Since there are no primary sources to accurately determine the tempo for the Moonlight Sonata first movement. Now you might say that uh, secondary sources are like circumstantial evidence, but that doesn't mean that they should be discounted. The first one of these secondary sources is Czerny. Carl Czerny knew Beethoven very well. He was his student. He was 20 years younger than Beethoven and he knew all of Beethoven's piano works. Czerny says that the tempo of the first movement is 60, according to his 1856 edition of the Beethoven Sonatas. And he says that it must be played as a moderato andante. Now possibly he knew about Beethoven's dissatisfaction with tempo descriptions. He doesn't go into any intellectual analysis. He doesn't talk about cut time, a la breve, and so on. But this doesn't mean that Cherney was wrong. He just gives a metronome number and says it must be played in moderate andante tempo. And he uses the word must. Symphony number no. three, Adagio Asai. Eighth note equals 80. And keep in mind the moonlight accompaniment. Almost identical here to the symphony. So we have this. is the Allegretto from Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, which is marked quarter note equals 76. of secondary sources that give us a tempo that is significantly faster than the average tempo that we hear on recordings and concerts. Churning at 60 and between the two symphonies that I gave examples of let's say about 78. Now Cherny knew Beethoven's piano works very well but the symphonic examples that I've given have metronome markings on them given by Beethoven himself. Personally, I am fairly comfortable playing either one of these tempos, but I'll conclude by playing it for you at a tempo that falls between the two of them, approximately 69. So for now, I'm going to sign off, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you soon.